Hi, everyone. And first of all, I really, really like to appreciate what Dr. Jiawei has presented to all of us. That comparatively, I'm just a high school student standing here with my first TED experience. But luckily, like Chen Jiawei, the president has also had, I had my critical thinking skills and my independent thinking skills. And that is what I hope I can inspire all of you at the end of this speech. I love debating. I often have debates with my friends. We have topics covering from, is IMF bringing more benefits than harms? Or just basically, should we poo on the public street? And by the way, this is me debating in my first debate champion um, a tournament. So one day, my friend asked me that, do you love your country? I say, yes, why not? Because 95% of the Chinese people believe the Chinese government and the Chinese authority as well. So I say, I have a sense of like a patriotism of my country. However, my friend says, no. Your love of the country is only based on the crowd. You are following what our people says, so it's basically another kind of populism and another kind of the crowd. At the end of the debate, I was really um, interested in a new word called the crowd that I searched on the internet. It is basically a book about social psychology. And in the book, it mentions that the crowd's emotions can be easily affected and can easily be changed to positive and to negative. They can be easily influenced not by the group, environment, also some small aspects, like an individual. And in this kind of situation, we call this collective unconsciousness. So I was really interested in a new concept called the crowd that I need to use my critical thinking skills that connect to something like we have experienced all of us in the past three years or something. So I've been connected the word the crowd with the COVID-19 pandemic that we all suffered in the past three years. And I've been concluded the COVID-19 pandemic into three stages. The first stage is in January 2020 that the first pandemic happened and the Chinese government decided to lock down the city of Wuhan for more than three months. People at the time, they're really, they're really confused about the Chinese authorities' decisions. They're saying like, why are you locking us down? I thought we had freedom before, then why everything's turned to negatively so fastly? So people were sending nasty comments onto the internet and they began to criticize the Chinese government's decisions. So that was really like a nasty environment for the internet as well. And then for the second stage, it was basically a couple of months later. It was like in June or July or something that the Chinese government has combated, succeeded in combating the virus temporarily when people have freedom in a short period of time. And at that time, people were really happy again. They said, like, yay, we win the virus, we have freedom again. And then basically the Chinese authorities say still millions of lives of people and people have strength gracefulness of the authority because they bring some happiness and their wealth as well. So at that time, the emotions had changed dramatically to negative to positive. However, this kind of situation does not last long because the third stage is in this July in Shanghai that the Chinese authorities decided to lock down the city again for three months. At that time, people were really nasty again. They saying that, I thought we had freedom before, but what, what, what's going on again? Especially in big cities like Shanghai. So people began to criticize on the internet again. Negative influences were all around the world. And also people began to follow others because someone says negative things and others will follow as well. This is what basically what the crowd is. The crowd is easily to be influenced by others and that their emotions can be changed. And the root reason for it is because they do not have their independent thinking skills. They believe what our people think and they follow it as well because they do not know what is the truth of it and what the Chinese authorities' decisions purposes is for. So I've been asking myself a question. Is the crowd populism? And the definition of populism is basically the same as the crowd where people's emotions can be easily affected and they only follow what other people think and they are only based on themselves and a group around them without their independent thinking skills. And after the question, me and my debate and the investigation of the three stages of the COVID-19 pandemic, my answer is yes, the crowd is populism. So back to the debate, I've been asking myself if whatever my love for the country is populism or not. After these six months, I've been giving a speech in this summer talking about cultural identity and national confidence. At that time, I already built a sense of a love of my country with my own independent thinking skills. And after these six months, I've been improving more and investing more in this kind of specific area, then I found that my love for the country is not what my debating partner has said is populism. It's also based on other two aspects that I want to discuss to you later more. 
which is basically one of all is nationalism, and second of all is patriotism. And I'm going to explain all these definitions later. And first of all, it's about patriotism. The definition of patriotism is people's love for the country based on its long life history. Like, as we all know, China has a history of more than 5,000 years, and this is something that most other countries in the world cannot be compared with. And this is something that it has advantages that we can communicate with people from the past and talk to ancient people as well, both literally, political, and even in civilization as well. So there's a good example of an army leader called Yue Fei, who was born in the late Song Dynasty and was commissioned to fight against the Jin Dynasty, where he knew his goals and he knew what he could contribute to his country with his own ability and his own thinking, critical thinking skills. Finally, he fights until the death of his life that everybody admired him and respected him as well, as well as me as well. At that time, his mother had a tattoo on his back saying that you should be loyal to your country. And that is what Yuefei had did, and he had a great sense of love with his country, not falling by the crowd, but with his own action as well. Second of, of the definition is patriotism, which is another form of loving a country based on its independence after suffering from difficulties. And talking about patriotism, my time is limited to 1840 to 1949, which is contemporary Chinese history and modern Chinese history. Like at that time, people were suffering a lot of Chinese because of war and like, and like food or something that people are suffering a lot. So people began to stand up. They want their independence. They want to have seek for a better future. So more and more people are standing up at that time. And we see leaders with their kind of ability as well, as well as UFA with this kind of like a transition of its great abilities. There's also a good example called Chen Duxiu, which is the political leader of the 1915 New Youth Movement and the 1919 May 4th Movement. And at that time, he stood up and bring students, workers into the political field that more and more people are getting to know the Chinese history and they know how to love their country because they have a leader and they know the leader has good critical thinking skills. As well as Chen Duxiu, his son also joined into the army as, uh, the army as well and followed Chen Duxiu's path to bring China a better future. So back to the debate, I've been asking myself the love of the country, which is based on two aspects which are given to you, pop, uh, patriotism and nationalism, that we should not follow the crowd as populism previously mentioned. And as a quote from Zhang Weiwei from Fudan University, one says, Chinese people that we need to be confident and by that confident, as I previously mentioned before, is based on cultural identity, national identity, and also cultural confidence as well. Because we know our own path, we know where we were before, we know what we're doing right now, and we know what we're gonna do in the future. And that is what cultural confidence is, and we're gonna bring our love of the country into another level based on our own independent thinking skills. So, at the last of the, um, the speech, as the topic TED has mentioned the next, Juno has asked us what the next definition is. It's about next speaker here right up, or the next day, or the next year, or something. But my definition is the next is the next thought of our teenagers. I'm just a high school student standing here giving, giving all of you my ideas because it is worth spreading, because we know that in the situation right now, people are loving this country without its um, leading or roots or something that we follow the crowd. However, the next, I hope that the next is going to be like a new thought with patriotism, nationalism, that all of you can inspire partly from it and bring the country to another level and love our country in a more reasonable way. And that's all. Thank you.